Hello and welcome to 6th Gen Farmer. Today we are back for part two of my John Deere High Cycle Build Series. So this is the current state of the cab. As you can see, it is completely tore apart. In the last video, I got uh, a bunch of wiring stuff done. I was fixing my gauge cluster and I got this relay wired in and auxiliary power strip and I got battery power in here and, and all this cool stuff. And I started taking the seat apart. Um, the problem is that in the midst of doing all that, I broke the light switch. As you can see, it's kind of coming apart in two parts right here. Not supposed to do that. So my plan today, was to start testing all these lights, see, make sure we got power everywhere, and then start wiring in my new LED lights. The issue is, without a switch, I can't do that. So, today's Sunday, I'm hoping that they have a switch at the dealership tomorrow morning, I can get that done right away. But, for the first part of this video, I'm going to attempt to clean up as much as I can in this cab, get as far as I can go to where I can install this light still, or this light switch, because I can't put it all the way back together Then, because then I can't install this switch. So, get it put back as far as I can, get some stuff cleaned up. I might try doing some welding on my seat suspension, which I'll show in a little bit. And then I'll probably see if I can get my globe bracket mounted on the front of my cab roof here. So that way I can put my Agri GPS RTK receiver on the roof, get my John Deere 4640 monitor in the cab and map while I spray. Because for doing trials and stuff, super nice to have. So I'm gonna start cleaning this up a little bit and then I'm gonna do some, some CAD modeling to make my bracket here to put my cigarette lighter, my voltmeter, USB chargers, and stuff like that. But first, I just kinda of wanna point this out. Uh, this is a gauge cluster. As you can see, it has six gauges. Fuel, engine water temp, engine oil pressure, voltage, trans oil, and air filter. Now, if you look at the piece of metal, the plate that goes on top, there's only five. So I didn't notice this until I took it apart, but this trans oil sensor light does actually not function and they actually covered it up. But I'm guessing that this is the same cluster that basically every other piece of John Deere equipment at the time used. So rather than making a one-off for the sprayer, they just covered it up, which is kind of neat. Never knew that, but okay. Time to clean this up, put some stuff together. I was waking up this morning, waking up before it's getting nine. Kinda heavy on my shoulders, tracking down some moments back in time. I could have swore that I was in it, down to every minute. Don't know what I was sipping, but I felt like I was doing fine. Wow, got to put back halfway together anyways. I don't know what it is about old equipment, but nothing lines up. Nothing ever lines up. I think it says some things shrink a little bit and some don't and yada, yada, yada. Anyways, got it all forced back together. Um, not all forced back together, but as far as I can go. Now, I got the seat bracket out because I don't know if you can see here how war these pins are. And I would like to, and then this is something I've never done. And I have no idea this is the correct way to do it. But my thought is clean this up a little bit and then take and then weld a little bit in there. And then take like a Dremel sander or something and sand it down so that way it's about the same um, as stock on both sides. That way I can get a little more life out of it and maybe also weld a little bit here on top where it's been wearing. be honest, I might not even have to clean that up. It actually worked astonishingly well. So it is now the next day. I got some parts ordered. I got a new light switch here in this box. Um, the bearings that I need to put the seat back together aren't gonna be until Wednesday. So I will not be able to sit in the, my high boy for another few days. I can get my light switch installed. I can start working on the lights today and get my cab put together. 100% minus the seat. So I didn't even ask him how much the light switch was because I didn't want to know, but I do need one. So I didn't really have a choice. I don't think they're that bad. When I looked online, they're like 50 bucks or something, which is still a lot for what it is. Don't get me wrong. For 50 bucks, I'd rather have a light switch than not have a light switch or 
trying. You know, if it was like a three hundred dollar light switch, I would probably buy some just normal switches and then try and wire it up myself. But fifty bucks, I'll keep the stock switch. And as far as the bearings go, typically, if deer doesn't have a bearing for something, uh, my dealership's really nice. I'll just be like, hey, I kind of need this today. Can you cross-reference it to like a Napa number or something? Then I can go over Napa and usually I can get a bearing. So this, the bearings for the seats have like a, a shoulder, or like a shelf on them, I guess you could call it. I've never seen one quite like it. And they were like, yeah, this is a pretty special bearing. You're probably not gonna find one elsewhere. I'm like, yeah, you're probably right. So, is what it is. Okay, got the switch installed. Crisp. Boom, boom, boom. A little noisier than the last one was, but I also noticed it was significantly lighter, so I'm guessing insides have changed a little bit on this switch. Hey! It's my speaker screw that I'm missing. So now in some way, shape, or form, all these wires get plugged in to the switch. Okay, so I referenced my pictures. Now, theoretically, if I turn this on, Hey, you can see a light shining on my side panel there. So let's see, this is W, which I think stands for working, which on this sprayer doesn't seem to do any, or is it warning? And then there's H, I've always thought that was hazard, but maybe that's high. I don't know, my high, but my other high boy has a dimmer switch and this one's been removed. So I'm not quite for sure how it all works. I'm gonna have to get the, uh, the electric tester out here. So let's see here now, I got the ground connected to the chassis. Got power on that one, nothing on that one, and nothing on that one. How do they wire this? They got rid of the high low beam, so now we just got, hmm. I don't understand why you would disconnect the high low beam switch. Because if I crawl underneath here, this orange plug um, is where the switch should be. And I don't even see where the wires go that would have been connected to it. What's I see they have also disabled my clutch safety switch. Typically in order to start these, you need to press the clutch all the way and it hits this button right here, but mine doesn't have any wires going to it. And I paid more money for some high low beam lights, but if I don't have a high and low, I might might as well just buy the cheaper LEDs and call it a day. Let's be honest, the high and the low beam doesn't really matter that much to me. I just want lights that work. So if my switch turns all the lights on rather than half of them, that's fine. Because what I have on my other high boys, this is on a high low beam, and then I have the ones that I install on top of the cab um, set to the high beam. So you can turn them off when you're going down the road or whatever, but let's be honest, I, I don't really don't care. So I might just wire everything to the power I got and put some LEDs in and call it a day. <laughs> so now we have another problem. I was playing with that wire underneath, I didn't know what it did. And now I have no power going to my front lights. They're not even turning on now. The back lights are. As you can see, that one's all lit up right there. Ugh. Push the wire. Pull the wire. Push the wire. Pull the wire. So I don't think I'm gonna spend the money for a dimmer switch because I don't really care, but I do need to fix whatever's going on right here. They just, they literally just shoved two wires. They didn't even use pins or nothing. They just shoved two wires in there. That's the issue. Right there. Ah, okay. Let's get some actual crimp pins in this thing and then taper back up. Call the day. I, if it was January and I had a lot of time, I would probably wire the dimmer switch back in, but it is end of March. I really want to get this thing out of here. Jumper, jumper cable it is. There we go. Now I tape the crap out of it. Theoretically, we'll have a working light system or a working good enough light system. So first things first, I'm going to remove these lights. Don't need anything down here. Um, it's just gonna be a hindrance to the corn. So I'll remove these ones and I got some LEDs I'm gonna put up on top of the cam. What in the heck? Did they have a reverse ground light? <laughs> I think they wired this light wrong because they're taking the power from the light up there and they wired it directly to the ground on this one. I literally got positive going straight to the chassis here. Because this wire doesn't do anything. This one's cut. If I remove that out of the way, it's just straight to the it's, it's straight to the chassis. Unless this is a ground wire and then they cut the positive. I guess that's possible. So then for the new lights, I went Amazon and I bought the cheapest LED lights I possibly could. Um, they're from the Nylite brand, not sponsored. Put them on a bunch of different things and they've held up good. So uh, why not my high boy? 
Okay, got the first one put together. I just use a cheap little magnet that I bought from the hardware store. And then, pretty simple, just magnets right to the top of the cab, and then I can see. Now, typically in the past, I've drilled a hole and then run the wires up through the cab, but I, I don't really know if I should do that or if I should just tape them up the side and call it a day. Don't really know yet, I haven't decided, but I'm gonna get the other one magnetized to the top of the cab as well. So, got the front lights hooked up, got the LEDs on the top. Now, I do have some LEDs ordered for right here, like I had mentioned earlier. Now that I'm looking at it and really starting to think about it, all I did was I just <laughs> taped the wires up the side and it's not the most beautiful thing I've ever done, but the more, the more I'm looking and thinking about this, especially like when we're in tall corn, these lights right here on the middle of the cab, they don't do anything because the corn is hitting them. So, I mean, it's, you, you can't, you can't see anything. Let me, let me put some footage up of, uh, of some high boy spraying I did before I put LED lights on. I have some lights ordered. They were like 50 some bucks, I think. Honestly, I might just return them because all those lights are basically doing is providing the power for the top lights. And in the field, it makes zero difference anyways. And even on the road, it really doesn't make that big of a difference because the ones on top do a pretty good job. Once it becomes nighttime and I get the cab put all the way back together here, I'll have to take it outside and drive around a little bit and, and just see how it acts. Um, or, or what I can can't see. Maybe it's a bigger deal than I think for going down the road. I am going to replace these lights right here completely. I'm gonna take these housings out and put in some, some other LEDs I have also on the way, but I do want to get a light on the back of the sprayer facing that way because when you're backing this sprayer up to the truck and you don't have any lights back here, it's really hard to judge how close you are to the truck and where you need to be. So just one simple light facing straight backwards that way when I'm backing up, I at least have some sort of idea where I am. So I just replaced these with LEDs in the same housing and everything on my old sprayer. And they worked really, really good. The housing was in the absolute perfect spot. You spin that light out and you point it straight out and it hits the boom absolutely perfectly. You can see all the nozzles. And I just don't know if I'm gonna be able to replicate that with some aftermarket lights. And housings and stuff so my thought is that we're not going to use my old high boy this year anyways probably so i'm just going to go switch these housings with the led ones on my other high boy and call it a day i can just return the lights i bought on amazon and buy myself groceries for another week but i also need to, to test one more thing bring my electric tester back out here i don't have any warning lights on this or at least i should say they don't work i'm guessing it's just some dead bulbs so i pulled the bulb out it looked kind of fried but i just want to double check that i'm getting power there so I'm gonna test this quick. That's not a good sign. Let me try the other one. Huh. Maybe I got the ground and the positive mixed up. I would say I'm not receiving power. I think I figured out my warning lights, potentially. Two weeks ago, I bought a technical service manual on eBay for it, like one that the, the John Deere tech department would have had back in the day and I was looking through it and I found the wiring diagrams and I went to the wiring diagram and the warning lights, the, the, the light switch goes to the turn signal control box and the turn signal control box controls the blinking that goes to the warning lights. Now I do know my turn signal box is not working quite correctly because when I, I can do a right turn signal but I can't do a left turn signal and it doesn't blink right. So I'm guessing something's probably bad inside that turn signal box and that's what's causing it. So I'm coming on to the other shed. This is where we have our other two high boys currently located, right there and there. And I, did, I don't remember if, if I turn the warning lights on if the turn signals sit there and blink with it. But I'll do a little test here. Ah, yes, my old friend. If only this one wasn't drinking so much coolant, I wouldn't have had to buy the new one. I'll just turn the key on and Yes, you hear that? That blinking, that clicking? Mine is not doing that. I think I have a bad control box. Because those flashers are working fine. Okay, well I know I can buy aftermarket ones of those, so that's gonna be something I order tonight. But now to steal some LED lights. This is what I'm talking about right here. I'm gonna steal these bad boys. Luckily, these things come apart pretty easily. If I remember right, you just kinda pull until something happens. There we go. 
So, got those lights stolen, put on. Don't need to worry about that anymore. Now I just need to get the one that's facing downward. I'm kind of struggling with this one, where to put it. I mean, I'm just planning on stealing power from right here and just ground it to the chassis and maybe just point it down that way, but I don't want to blind cars behind me. So I think if I point it down and face it to the right, that way when I'm driving down the road, it'll be on the right-hand side and won't blind cars that are coming this way and then the cars that are behind me will be pointing down so it won't affect them too much either. Ideally I'd put it on a switch but I just don't know a good way to wire a switch back here. It just sounds like a, a pain. No! <laughs> Oh, I don't know where that went. So I got that wired in. Like right here, it's ridiculously bright. But hopefully, if I walk back here, it's face down enough that it won't be quite as, okay, that's still super bright. So once again, it's getting pretty late. So I put the camera down for a second, got the cab back together. I got a, a spare chair in here, my, my old office chair, while I'm waiting for my parts to come in to fix mine. Got my MTG plugged in and into my power strip and got everything pretty cleaned up up here. We're gonna give it its first test drive. So I wanna apologize right now before we even start. Once I start this thing, the audio in here, probably gonna be bad, but I think you'll deal with it for a little bit. You know, that don't look too bad. Let's get her in here and drive somewhere where it's a little bit darker. Oh, are you kidding me? That's completely doable. Yeah, we're good. The backlight works. My MGG's turned on. My Bluetooth radio's working. What a fantastic little ride. Well, there we have it, folks. I thought this was gonna be a two-part video series, but it turns out it's gonna be a three because I still have to do my CAD design for my bracket. This is gonna go right there. It's gonna have like a voltage meter, a USB charging ports, a cigarette lighter, and my bracket for my GPS receiver is sold on the roof, and a bracket built to hold my John Deere monitor in the cab so that way I can map and, and stuff. Um, that'll be part three, and I'll probably get the seat put back in there too for that part, so. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next one.